there are currently 104 women who serve in the United States Congress. That's 20 in the Senate and 84 in the House of Representatives. That's 19.4% of our federal representation is made up of women. For a country whose population of women is a little over 50%, we would agree that less than 20% of the representation is pretty sad. What's even more startling is that the only black woman to serve in the United States Senate in the history of the country is Carol Mosley Braun. With statistics like that, one often asks me, or a lot of people ask me, why do politics matter to me? Well, actually, when I go to high schools, they want to know how much money do I make, how, what kind of car do I drive, and how many Instagram followers do I have? And then they ask me, why did I choose politics? In actuality, it was politics that chose me. There are two things I can point to that precipitated my career into politics. First is my actual upbringing. My mom was a single parent of three kids. She was actually a teenage mom, and she worked two or three jobs to make ends meet. We actually had a running joke in our house. We were so poor that we said our ends didn't necessarily have to meet as long as they could see each other. We would be good. <laughs> the second thing that inspired me to go into politics is a man I met in 2007 named Simon Spoon. I was volunteering for City Gospel Mission every Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. serving breakfast. And one morning I was cleaning up the tables and Mr. Spoon and I got into a discussion. I'm not sure why we started talking, but we started talking. And I learned a lot about Mr. Spoon in about 30 minutes. I learned that he was a homeless Vietnam veteran. That's, that struck a chord with me because he had never received his VA benefits. He had told me about his history with drugs and alcohol, but he was clean, but he somehow couldn't navigate the system to receive his benefits. So he and I became friends, and for about two months, I was going down to Washington Park, but not the Washington Park that looks like Disneyland, the real Washington Park. I was going down there every day to bring Mr. Spoon food or blankets or whatever he needed. So together, he and I took three, three and a half months to secure his benefits. He couldn't get an apartment until he had proof of income. It was very rough. We had to, it was a, a matter of us driving him to places, me not having time and giving him bus money to get to the places he needed to get to. But eventually, we got a letter that said, Simon Spoon, you're entitled to $917 a month in VA benefits. The sad part is, Mr. Spoon died a week before the check was supposed to come. Broke my heart. I have that letter to this day. It's one of my most prized possessions, that letter from the VA. So with things like that, with things like that happening, you see them and you wonder, how can I get involved? How can I make life better for others? Those are the things that precipitated my career into politics. It's that same passion and enthusiasm that I go to work with every day. So I work as Director of Community Affairs for Cincinnati City Council Member P.G. Sidenfeld. P.G. is the youngest ever directly elected council member in the history of our, of our city. In our first term in 2011, we sat down with a man who was like really enthusiastic. He wanted to change the city. He had a, a lot of plans for redevelopment. And he came to our office and put out these maps. And what he said to me was, we want to take this bus stop by this grocery store and move it three blocks down because we don't like the crowd that it attracts. And we can't attract development unless we move the crowd. It was at that very moment that I understood why I got into politics. My question to him was, have you ever caught the bus with groceries? He said, no. I said, have you ever caught the bus with a stroller with kids and groceries? He said, no. I said, have you caught the bus in the rain with kids and, the grocery, and groceries? He said, no. It was at that very moment that I understood that it was my job to be an advocate for those who didn't have a voice. It's that same passion that leads, drives me every day to do the job that I do. I'm very passionate about women in politics because I feel like there's a space that we occupy uniquely that no one else can, can occupy. And it's with that same fervor that I believe and I go out every day and somehow I try to inspire women to get involved in politics. I became involved in a program here called Elect Her. It's a national, it's actually a national program, but it's bipartisan that encourages young women to get involved in student government and eventually politics. So I felt that it's my job to be an advocate for the single mother who's raising her kids so that one day she hopes that they can have a TED Talk. My mom relied heavily on public services, public assistance, welfare checks, and public health clinics were really what helped me stand before you today. 
And so I go into government so I can make sure those things are protected because I'm evidence that those things work. I want to go to work and I want to be a champion for Simon Spoon and other veterans who feel neither honored nor respected by the service they gave to this country. I also want to go to work for young people, men, ladies and, and, and guys, who are told to wait their turn, but we know whose turn will never come. Women in politics are, are near and dear to my heart, and there's a little ambiguity to my talk. If you see, my talk is called, I Run Like a Girl. I am currently training for a mar my first marathon on May 3rd. I don't know what the heck I was thinking when I said I was going to do a marathon. <laughs> I was like, God, you put it out in the universe, and you tell people that, and I can't take it back now, so if I die at the 26 mile, you see like some Volt Nikes, just come pick me up and scoop me up and keep it going. <laughs> but I'm passionate about women in politics, the same as I'm passionate about women in athletics, because I know what athletics did for me. And ladies, until we get involved in politics, the pay gap won't dissipate. Won't dissipate. They'll continue to see pregnancy as a handicap, and they'll limit our, rights as, as health, or lim limit our women's health rights to just abortion. There's more to our health than abortions. And so I say to you today, you say, what, what can I do to make, it, make an impact in the world? I heard a quote that's probably my, one of my favorite quotes. It's diversity is being asked to party, and inclusion is actually being asked to dance. So those of you who are in decision-making in decision positions, be more intentional about the diversity, particularly as it relates to women. Be more vocal to your represent, representatives, because a lot of times that their staff that they hire go on to become elected officials. I don't know if I'll be one of those, but that's what happens. So encourage your elected officials to hire more women on their staff. So I'll end this with a salute to all women, good women, particularly women in politics. May we know them, may we be them, may we raise them. Thank you.